Hey there, this is Jacob from Robofo, here today to talk about the out-of-scope problem in computer vision. So what is the out-of-scope problem and how can we solve it? The out-of-scope problem is a problem that plagues many machine learning models where essentially you've collected a data set that is a narrow subset of the wide world. And when data from the wide world is shown to your model, your model doesn't know how to generalize to it because it hasn't seen any data from this kind of out-of-scope context. And so out of scope can be one of these things that is hard to master because you don't really know exactly what uh, might be coming in from the wide world when you deploy your model in production at inference time. And so because of this problem, we've come up with a few simple solutions that you can think about uh, towards tackling this problem to making your machine learning model even better and even more robust. So uh, getting a little bit real world, here's an example of an out of scope uh, problem that might plague your model. Uh, so take the RoboFlow Raccoon's object detection data set, for example. So this data set um, is essentially composed of all images of raccoons, and these raccoons have been annotated with bounding boxes to identify the location of a raccoon in, in an image. And one thing that's of note in this data set is that all of these images are all raccoons, so there's nothing that is non-raccoon in the data set. So you can imagine what happens when we deploy this model live, say if we were to deploy it in our, our webcam here, it's gonna think that everything is a raccoon. So here's an example of this model thinking that uh, I, the blog author here, uh, am a raccoon. Um, so that is a problem, and that's that's a good example of an autoscope problem where this uh, sort of image from a webcam here was not anticipated by the original data set, and that there is therefore an, an autoscope problem. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, how we can tackle this autoscope problem. So, the first step is to construct a representative test set. So this is basically being honest with yourself and saying, I know this is going to be the deployment condition. I need to gather as many images as I can from all these di different test areas in deployment condition and uh, set them up in a way that's going to be fully representative of the whole test set um, for when I go and deploy my model. Obviously, that is tough to do, so we'll, we'll get a little bit more in below about how you can kind of create a bit of a machine learning loop as you kind of find the new boundaries of your problems. Uh, solution number two is to restrict your deployment domain. So this is something we often um, advise people who are working on computer vision problems is to think about how can you minimize the space that your model needs to learn and try to eliminate um, all of the ways that those um, sort of difficult to handle scenarios might be coming in from the wide world. So. A good example here might be something where you have a lot of control, like a manufacturing floor, where there are things coming down a conveyor belt and those things are relatively predictable and you minimize the space that the model needs to, to model is um, just to that simple space of that conveyor belt or, or something there, there similar. Um, the next solution is to gather null out of scope data. So this is something where you've kind of accepted that there's gonna be out of scope data. You don't necessarily know um, exactly what it's gonna be but you should gather null images. So in the raccoons data set, we could gather a bunch of images of similar scenes to like where I'm at right now and just leave all of these things unlabeled. And then you can pass all of this data through your model during train time. So it'll kind of create some sort of notion of things that are outside of its scope where it shouldn't make predictions or it should, um, or, or in classification case, it will predict an actual out of scope class for that, um, realm of, of data that is um, completely out of scope. One pitfall here that I wanted to, to add was that you can drown your data set with nulls. So if you get too much null data, let's say you have 10,000 null images and you only have 200 labeled images or something, it is possible for that null data to kind of completely engulf the prior of your model. And so your model won't actually start to pick up any steam because it, it just kind of thinks that everything is null. So be careful not to drown your data set with nulls. Um, now, solution number four is to actively label problematic out of scope data. So what do I mean here? I mean here that you might have data where you see, you know, this uh, certain thing coming in at test time. And at test time, you see this certain piece of the image is kind of uh, getting problematically identified. So you can actively label um, certain things in those images to let the model know that it should predict some other class for these things. A, a good example here might be uh, if you have a phone that's moving through a manufacturing process and you want to identify where the missing screws are in the phone, um, you know, you might uh, just have labeled screw or something, but then when the missing screw comes in, it often will still show up as screw because all the same context area will be there. So you might want to actively label missing screw and 
not missing screw. Um, that's a good, good example for solution number four. Now, solution number five is sort of what I was talking about earlier, where you, you want to deploy active learning when you're kind of tackling this land of the out of scope data. What I mean by that is you have an active learning pipeline where you're gathering more data continuously, retraining your model and re redeploying your model as you identify new pieces um, that were out of scope that you didn't, didn't see before uh, in solution number one when I told you to con construct a representative test set. Um, so that's kind of wraps it up for our solutions to the out of scope problem. Um, thank you for watching today. Uh, best of luck tackling the out of scope problem in your domain and of course uh, always uh, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and uh, we will see you in the next video. Until then.